what would an office be without dogs to keep you company, eh? <laughs> She's tired out. We've done nothing today. Hello and welcome back to Writerly Witterings. And it's strange times because today I've received a parcel and there's going to be an unboxing very shortly to show you what that's all about. But today I promised would be a look around my office for those of you who might be interested. And I swore to myself, I swore that I would not go around tidying things up just because it was embarrassing to let you all see what condition this place really is in. Well, I've, I've only done a little bit of tidying. It's a mess. I do apologise, but because I've got this new box to work on and I've got a lot of other work to, to do, it's just been a little bit hectic. So, here is a whistle-stop tour of the Jex working office. And first of all, I'd like to draw your attention to a few odd things, such as, for example, the number of weapons around the place. There, there's a very nice large hand-and-a-half or two-hand sword imitation, but it was made in Toledo. It was um, collected by some friends of ours. We used to stay at the Evesham Hotel every year for a week because we couldn't afford to go abroad and they were delightful people and in fact they were so delightful that one year we had to cancel because we just couldn't afford it with royalties being a bit late and not being as big as we'd hoped and various other problems and so we called the Evesham Hotel and said look really sorry we can't come and stay we've got to cancel and the delightful chap there said well I don't want to embarrass you but why don't you come and have your holiday anyway because the children like it and you can pay us when you've got the money sadly the Evesham Hotel is not the hotel it was then when it was a nice family run business but I'll always remember that little bit of kindness from him it's a delightful thing and then when they sold the hotel and moved out he said, you like swords, have this one. Which was nice, I thought. I've also got this other sword. Excuse me a moment. This one's a nice authentic sword. Because it was made by Dave Denford. Dartmoor Dave Denford. Just up the road from here. And I asked him if he could make me a sword once. And he said, oh, I don't know. I haven't tried one of them. I'll do that. So it made me this. It was very much a first attempt, but it's delightful and it's always behind my desk as a large size letter opener. Dave Denford, the same chap, also made this. He was very proud of having worked at Oakhampton Military Camp for a while and as a blacksmith he had an interest in military weaponry and I suggested to him once that he might like to make the awards for the Crime Writers Association Ian Fleming Steel Dagger Awards. And he said, oh, that's a challenge, I'll try that. So he made this as a prototype for a series of trophies for successful crime writers for the best thriller of the year. And I think they're absolutely delightful. I was very sad when the CWA decided to get different types of trophy because it was felt that apparently a real dagger was far too dangerous to give to crime writers. Figure that out for yourself. In future they had to be imitation daggers in a plastic block. These are actually useful. I use this every day when I'm opening letters. There you have three of the weapons in the room. And then up here, there are two shotguns. Are they working shotguns? No, they are not. My guns, I have got shotguns, but they have to be locked in a gun safe. 
These are deactivated guns and I was given them by Surrey Police because the most delightful chap there as a firearms officer, Dave Stark, who was next sergeant in the police and um, then became one of their firearms investigation officers, said he'd been told by a nice gentleman in Catrum that these two guns were no longer needed. Basically they were shot completely to hell and they couldn't be fired safely, they weren't safe. So the guy asked could he keep them and he was told by the police well no you can't keep them unless they're on a firearm certificate or you have to have them completely wrecked so that they can't ever be used again. And he said I don't want to spend 60 quid on these guns having them completely wrecked. Um, can't I just hand them in? And Dave contacted me and said look if you want them you can have them on your license and then you can get them wrecked. So I said oh alright. So I bought, I took them, I wasn't forced to buy them, I took them and took them to a local gunsmith who took an angle grinder to the bottom of the barrels, took off the firing pins, basically wrecked them so they couldn't possibly be used again. But I think they look lovely on the wall, so they stay there. I also have another gun. This is over the other side of the wall. It's a BSA 2.2 rifle and it's wonderful. This gun used to kill a lot of rabbits because when I started writing we couldn't afford meat. So I bought this for I think it was £65 from the local gun dealer with a firearms license. I'm a legal shooter I hasten to add but this became a source of income because I could be paid to go and shoot rabbits over different people's land because when you have horses you don't want rabbits they dig holes and they can break the horse's legs so if you've got an infestation of rabbits the first thing you do is call somebody in to get rid of them and I was called in not only did I earn a little bit of money from the landowners I also got to eat the rabbits and I have to admit rabbit is a wonderful meat because it takes on the flavour you want so you can make sausages you can make burgers you can make all sorts and just with a little bit of flavouring it works very well but this gun again has been deactivated it's destroyed basically the barrels completely blocked the breech has been cut away so it can't possibly fire anything so it's just a decorative piece but it's a, it's got a history behind it a history that reminds me of what writing used to be like when I started now one thing that people always want to look at is where the action happens. I'm now going to pick up this camera so I can show you what it looks like. This is going to be the exciting bit or not. So here, here is my very expensive chair that adjusts in every possible way and saves me getting a bad back and when I'm sitting there right in front of me is the Apple computer and then a whole bunch of rubbish so there's the free write from Astra House there in its funny little wallet so sitting at my desk there is my Apple iMac there is the Astra House free write for when I'm out and about or just really want to get away from a screen because I don't want to have the problem of interruptions from emails and so on and I find it's brilliant. This as you can see is a small shelf from my auntie Dorothy Mary who died many years ago and this was something I just picked up from her because I didn't want to see it go to waste. There is the book I'm currently working on. I'm editing that furiously. Over here we have, you can see there and there, the two speakers which I bought with a wonderful Hardman Carden setup. So I've got excellent music quality which would be even better if I had any hearing in my right ear still. Then this is a series of books that I'm going to be reviewing shortly. Obviously Thesaurus, 
and dictionary, they're both essential. I've got The Moorland Murderers, which is book six in the Jack Blackjack series. That's all good fun. And from here, as you can see, there is a massive whiteboard. Down there is the chair, which I sit on just outside my stable doors when it's lovely sunshine in the evening, because I can just sit out there and have a nice rest. This is a selection of books which I consider useful and interesting, and there's nowhere else to file them. So there's quite a lot of thrillers, quite a lot of other things of interest. So moving across to the whiteboard, you can see here, there's also some of my painting stuff. So water pots, brushes, various bits of paper. Although underneath there is a rather more vital set of home brewing gear as well as my walking gear. So my rucksack which takes me all over the moors. But the most important thing really is here, which is encyclopedia and then I've got psychology, spying and crime all the way down through torture. I mean, bits of the Inquisition and so on are very interesting, aren't they? And other stuff. So I've got a modern herbal, for example. Various other books down there. And on the opposite side of this set of shelves, these shelves I collected from my father when he died. I just thought it would be really useful having a set of shelves that stood out that I could look at whenever. This is much more crime murder orientated here so also english and then brewers the thesaurus all sorts of stuff these books up here i've got some large print editions of my books and foreign editions and then there's general non-specific stuff on cars on vegetation, gardening, various other things, and fishing. It's assorted stuff that I'm just interested in, really. But the main stuff in the office is the chaise longue here for the dog, and then all of my books. These books are the ones I just had delivered recently. These books are the ones I've got to review in order. So Martin Edwards gets written up first and then I'm on to The Saboteur. I've also got to read Debbie Mogach's The Black Dress before long. Strange how every now and again you get these odd books turn up. I mean, obviously I'm known as a crime writer. Why would I be receiving a book like Mother Mother by Annie McManus to review? It is not my natural arena and I'm not realistically the sort of person that other people are going to look to for advice on books on family life and the like. It's just peculiar. I don't know why they sent them to me. Here's a bunch of files. That's exciting, isn't it? These are my books. So I've got a whole load of Fields of Blood and Blood on the Sand. If you would like any of my books, bear in mind I need to make more space in my office and I'm ever so happy to sell them. And if I can sell them, she'll be happy to have more space to make, make mess in. She's good at that. She's happy right now as you can see. More books down here in plastic boxes where they're safe, several piles of them. Now this is the historical thesaurus of the English dictionary, which is just fantastic. It's a brilliant, brilliant resource. I also have, oh look, there's more books down here. These are generally books on history, the Edwards, on Devon and Dartmoor, and these encyclopedias of course. And then we have my general books. Now, trying to work out the best way of showing all this. There's quite a lot of books here, which are books of philosophy and thinking. 
I've got Medieval and Tudor Drama, which I've got recently, which I have to review, uh, not review, I have to read with a view to incorporating some of that into the Blackjack series. And then we really go down Terry Jones' fabulous Chaucer's Night, truly inspirational, fantastic book. Um, Medieval Outlaw, that was interesting. Uh, books to pull out from this lot. Portrait of Dartmoor, that's very good. Um, Terry Jones, Who Murdered Chaucer, The World of Chaucer. Chronicles, that's a fascinating book. King Edward II is great, apart from the conclusion at the end. The Kiss in History, that was interesting. Power and Profit, The Merchant in Medieval Europe, that was fantastic read, really, really good one. Just shift this out of the way. Medieval Schools, that's fascinating. Nick Orm is a very good historian. Ian Mortimer, The Time Traveller's Guide to Medieval England. Apologies for the cable, but it was necessary. These, the Selden Society books, are just brilliant, really fantastic. Coming down here, this is all slightly more weird, although William Cobbett, Rural Rides, is a fascinating book. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, of course, very, very interesting. And then we come up here. These are all my maps, well, quite a few covering the country, but then a really interesting series of books of history. English Fair was fascinating, King's Messengers was fascinating, the Pilgrim book was fascinating. That's the trouble, all these books are so interesting. Then the books from the Devon and Cornwall Record Society are really well worth looking at. One of the books I refer to all the time is The Crown Please of the Devon Ayer, or Air of 1238, which is really, really useful. Then Tavistock Abbey by Finberg was one of those books that brought me into history much more swiftly. History of the Diocese of Exeter is good. Selden Society publishes books which give lots of detail about how cases were run. Um, it gives you transcripts from the cases that, that he talks about. And just fantastic. If you see Selden Society books and you're interested in history, grab them. Dungeon Fire and Sword was the book that really inspired me to write The Last Templar and the rest of the 32, 33 Templar stories. These are general history books that I will look at and refer to regularly. This is interesting. It's what the front of Exeter Cathedral would have looked like when it was originally completed it would have been painted and if this is what it would have looked like because they've found residue of the paints on the items when they've been looking at it whoops pick that up in a minute here new towns of the middle ages that's been a, fa a fabulous read here we've got a battery charging for this camera we have pencils where are they so here's all my pencils and pencil stubs, and then inks and so on in the bottom. Carrying on, we've got History of England. We've got a range of books, all of which have given me huge amounts of inspiration over the years. This, this was my mother's and I always rather liked it. Yep, probably a bit more than you wanted to hear, but never mind. I just love it. It's a little bit of Austria in my in my office. So then we get to the standing desk. What have we here? Well, we've got a curved bookshelf here because this was made by my father-in-law for his sitting room in Biggin Hill many, many years ago. And I'm not going to get rid of it because I like having things that remind me of people I've known. Underneath here, you can just see, are a set of first editions of the paperbacks. 
of mine, that is. And then we have my standing desk with envelopes for writing for the Writerly Witterings Pen Pals Club, which is what these files are all about. Then up here, behind all this lot, you'll see we've got the newer editions of all of those books that are underneath. These are the Simon & Schuster versions, those underneath are the headline versions, and then stationery and some more stationery and cuttings, files and stuff like that. And then we're on to the next set of books. Look at all this lot! So running along the top there, these books were given to me by Ian Mortimer, and they're all the Royal Historical Society books. And then we've got Cambridge Medieval History, he gave me as well. And the rest tend to be more my own stuff. So here we've got Devon and Cornwall Record Society with their new covers. Here we've got the Devonshire Association papers, general history, the Great War, Spencer papers, doo -doo -doo -doo, lots and lots of stuff. Foissars Chronicles. An excellent picture here of Tinners Morris with me dancing. I think in South Zeal, I'm not sure. And then again, more books, more history books, Churchill's History of the English-speaking people, History of the Second World War. More books than you could shake a stick at. Notable trials. Now this is my interesting section here now. Public executions, notable historical trials, and then the Newgate calendar over there behind the sword. All of them superb for research purposes. Very, very handy. Down here, under the first set of shelves, we have my stamps and my files of different books, as well as some flavoured gins, because you can't have too many flavoured gins. I've also got my standard here, which is my Bible. It's the Oxford English Dictionary, but the whole dictionary compressed into one volume instead of the 21, so it actually has nine pages per page which have been photo photocopied and reduced down to get the nine per page which means you need to have a magnifying glass to read it but even with a magnifying glass fabulously useful underneath this second lot here is a waste paper bin which hasn't been emptied for far too long but never mind that behind that is my firearms section and weaponry. Also above there, that's the detailed firearm stuff, because many, many years ago, before pistol shooting was banned, I was a pistol shooter, and this was an old style English firearm certificate, which was fun. Happy days. This then is the Jex section, because we've got Last Templar behind the sword's handle, going all the way along and then all the way down here with the Templar series. And then some other books I've, I've worked on, so Act of Vengeance is my own. How Done It is with the Detection Club, which I am the Honorary Secretary of. This is the latest series, the Jack Blackjack series. And then above here we've got Medieval Murderers and various other titles that I worked on where I submitted short stories. And then of course we've got all of this lot which is research and that's not research. That was a book where I wrote the introduction for the collector's piece, which was fun. Then I've got my old history books here, coming down, tons of stuff, lots of books. These ones, oh look there's another gun, are, oh and another gun, <laughs> both antiques, don't worry, both of them non-capable of firing. Um, these are some more books I picked up fairly recently and 
I have yet to read. Whereas down here we've got more review uh, research books for the Blackjack series and a little bookend which I rather like. And so there you have it. A quick whistle top tour of my office. A view of all of the little guns, knives, swords and a few books. But for me, a place where I can invent things and create stories has to be a relaxing space. So it's got lots of little knickknacks around. It's got my mother's musical box. It's got the swords. It's got deer that my parents used to own. My office is somewhere where I will occasionally draw swords or spears or act out different scenes. I'll talk to myself. I'll walk about. And it's a place where I have to feel comfortable, so I need all of these different props and memories just to keep me in the mood and in the mindset. In the same way as when I'm writing, I will constantly play the same music over and over again because it's the music that reminds me of the story that I was working on the night before. And of course, I need all of these books because I am constantly researching, constantly reminding myself what it was that I was doing. And there, you have an office. Next time you see it, that Apple computer will have disappeared and there will be a new one in its place. That's exciting. It'll be strange to get rid of this old one, but it'll also be rather nice. Because the new one hopefully is going to be a great deal more reliable. And, having said all that, I think there's very little more to say. So thanks ever so much for watching. Do please hit the like button, because that means that the algorithm pushes me further up the charts. And subscribe, and share it, and tell your friends, and all the stuff that you normally do on, on these social media. And in the meantime, Thanks a lot for watching and I'll speak to you soon. If you're interested in joining a Pen Pals Club, don't forget to look down the bottom and write to me at right, writerly wittery... Oh, I'll put the link in the bottom. And I'll speak to you soon. Thank you very much. Take care.